everyone. Um, today I wanted to talk to you about brush lettering and my study of brush lettering. And most of all, I want to see if there are some people out there who are interested in learning brush lettering with me. So I am just going to talk to you about how I got started, just kind of my tips on getting started. And I guess this is just an invitation to see if people want to do this with me. And I have some ideas on how we can, you know, share our work and stuff like that. So, um, the first thing that I did when I decided I wanted to learn brush lettering was to find a resource that I thought would be really helpful to me. And one of the resources I found that I really liked was Hello Brio Studio by Jen Coyle. She has some YouTube videos that you can go watch for free. And she basically, in her YouTube videos, she has a series that will take you through the basic strokes. She will take you through for forming letters. And then she even starts to take you through forming words. Now, I feel like the videos alone are not going to be enough for most people. She also has an ebook which I downloaded, and these are actually practice sheets from the ebook, which I found super helpful. I just, I'm constantly just printing out pages and pages of these and practicing. And she also just has a lot of really great tips when it comes to practicing. Now, she is not the only one out there doing brush lettering instruction, both free and paid. There's also... I think her name is Dawn Nicole. She does a lot of brush lettering stuff. Um, what you're gonna find is if you go on YouTube and just start searching for brush lettering tutorials, I think Karen Warner is another one, you will find a style you like. I happen to like most of the letter style that Hello Brio Jen Coyle does, and so that's why I kind of focused on her ebook for my beginning instruction. I also, I'm gonna link below, I have a whole Pinterest board of resources for learning brush lettering. So if you are feeling a little hesitant about being able to go out there and find resources on your own, please go look at my Pinterest board and you'll find some stuff from there. I have pinned free stuff and stuff you'd pay for, so just find what kind of suits your budget and also just your learning style. I think that's really important. So when you start out with brush lettering, you're going to need some tools. Not any plain old marker will work. Um, I have a whole pile of, of brush lettering tools that I use, and, and I'll try to quickly talk about some of these. My number one favorite tool for brush lettering is the Pentel. Fude Touch Sign Pen. Let me show you. This is just so, so nice for practice. I like that it's a fine brush point, so I like to do, you know, like this size practice, and I feel like if you're using the industry standard, which is also really good, and I would rate this as my number two favorite practice tool, look at the size difference. And I think that it is easier to make neater, smaller letters with the Pentel Fude than it is with the Tombow ABT, at least for a beginner. If you're a super advanced person, you might disagree with me, but this video isn't really for you after all, so don't worry about it. <laughs> also, I find the Pentel Fude Touch are a little le less sensitive. A lot of people, well, I shouldn't say a lot of people, some people complain that the Tombow ABT fray, but I think that's because they're using paper with nap in it instead of super smooth paper. So I will also be going over the, the kind of paper I think you guys should be using. So again, my number one recommendation for brush lettering is the Pentel Fude Touch. Let me just kind of show you. I'll use my practice sheet. And while I'm at it, I will use, I'll put this guide behind it. You can buy pre-made guides or you can make your own. And in my resources, I've linked to a way to make your own guide. I'm not sure if this one is actually the right angle, but it gives you the idea. 
So if I were going to use the Pentel food, now mine are well loved and well used, so you actually can start to see an angle in them. <laughs> I've practiced so much with mine that some of them are totally starting to dry up, but. The, the whole, like the thing to understand when you're starting out brush lettering is you're pressing harder on your downstroke and pressing lighter on your upstroke. And that's how you get the, the variation in your letters. So if you don't have it in your budget to get something like the Pentel Fude Touch and you need to work with something you already have at home, you just need to find a marker that will allow you to do that. Be thicker on the down and finer on the up. One that actually works really well are the Crayola markers, believe it or not, but let me kind of show you. See how I'm able to go fine and thick? And it, you know, it actually looks pretty decent. And there are, I, again, in my resources you'll find these, but there are totally people out there who do all of their brush lettering I mean, at least most of it with Crayola markers. So you, you, you do not need to spend any money to be able to kind of like be involved in this fun little thing that I want to try. And then let me just show you the Pentel Fude Touch because why not? So the, so as you can see, I am just a beginner, no reason at all to feel intimidated. If you are a super beginner, this is the exact right thing for you. Let me go over a few other options because you might have some of these at home or you might be interested in getting them for practice. So this one is pretty interesting, the Faber Castell Pit Artist Pin. This one is actually feels more like a brush when you're using it which makes sense for brush lettering. It's a lot more, it's not as firm, you know, it's, uh, I feel like you have to be more, more skilled to use it well. And so I don't reach for this one much when I'm practicing, although they are lovely and they come in a lot of really great colors. Like, I feel like these look like cosmetics. I kind of enjoy that. So that's another option you might already have if you have like coloring supplies or whatever. Um, some of these I really would not recommend. I mean, these are like great pens, but I wouldn't recommend them for brush lettering practice because they bleed like crazy. But you can certainly use them for practice if you have them. So I just wanted to show you those. Let me see, I have some other Others that I reach for often in practice. This one, believe it or not. So this is the Kudetake Mangaka Flexible. So it really is marketed for like drawing comics and stuff, but it's totally, oh, you can see how well loved mine is by looking at the tip here. But see how this tip is kind of pointed to the side? That's because I've been using it so much. And actually I've, I've dried the darn thing up. But you kind of get the idea. This is a fantastic pen for brush lettering practice. And I, I used it I like I used it so much that it, it attests, I think, to how awesome this pen is. Again, both for drawing and for brush lettering. The Kude Color and the, this is by Kude Take, the Kude Color Fine End Brush for Manga has a brush and a fine end. And so if you get into kind of like experimenting with your letters, this one can be fun because you can do something like this and then do the brush over your down strokes. Kind of blend it. So these can be fun to work with, especially if you're a better artist than I am. <laughs> and there's another Faber Castell pit. Oh yes, the where is mine? I have too many tools here. That one I want to mention. 
Okay, yes, of course, the Coco Ito, and I use these so much for practice that these are starting to get all pointed too. But let me just kind of show you. These are great for if you wanna make even tinier letters. So let me just show you, I can make a much tinier H. Um, so I really like the Coco Ito, especially if you're like writing um, in, in a smaller space, like on a traveler's notebook insert or something like that, I highly recommend the Coco Ido uh, letter tip inserts. Make sure you're not getting the ball tip, which is more like a ballpoint pen. But these are fun too, because you can customize the barrel and your ink. So another super favorite practice one. Also for practice, you're gonna wanna have a pencil and a and an eraser. I really like using stick erasers or like pretty erasers like this. This is my Sakura eraser. I think it's gorgeous. The, the stick erasers are super convenient too because you might be, like if you're on a regular grid paper like this, you are going to sometimes want to make pencil marks for your guidelines. because you have a baseline, an X line, an A sender, and a D sender. And so that way when you're practicing on your own without your a guide sheet or, or some kind of special paper, you know where to you know, shape your letters. And you also, as you get more advanced, you get to experiment with having different widths for your guidelines to kind of like stretch out your letters and make them you know, kind of just like your own style. But but for right now, I would just focus on finding a resource that you want to use to learn and getting some tools to, to learn. Here's another one, the Fude Mikase, the Pilot Fude Mikase is fantastic. And again, um, you can see how much I love this one because it's pointed. But these are all great, and these these are great for you, you know making finer or sorry tinier letters too. So I would gather a pencil and eraser. Some that I recommend would be like a stick eraser, like the Enoch, or if you want to go even finer, you can get the Tombow the Tombow Mono that comes in the. I'll, I'll link it below so you guys understand what I'm talking about. I love the Monograph. The monograph is awesome because not only is it super attractive, but you can shake it to extend the lead, which is very cool. You can, I mean, you can also do the tr traditional clicking, but it all it holds a very, you know, a longish twist up eraser. So if you had this pencil, you don't necessarily need an extra stick eraser, but it is nice to have an eraser when you're doing brush lettering. If you want to make your own guide sheet, it's really nice to have. What is this called? I'm blanking. This, uh, I'm embarrassed that my brain can't think of what this is called. So I put it on the screen so you can get one. Or of course you can order guide sheets like the one, like, like this type of guide sheet. I will confess that when I'm practicing, I don't use a guide sheet a lot. And part of that's I don't want to rely on them and I just want to create my own lettering because the stricter I make it, the, the less I practice and I, because I don't enjoy it. So you want to keep these things in mind. You know, you might have very different personalities for practicing. One of the things I've done because the Tokyo Pen Shop starter kit has been so popular, I did make a brush lettering starter kit. So you get to try like one each of my favorite kind of brush pen. And each one is has a very um, different set of colors in it. So I've made them so that like if you, so a lot of people like to come back and order the starter kit, but then you're getting mostly the same stuff. So with the brush lettering starter kit, I made it so that every one would be totally different. And it does include an awesome shaker pencil and a stick eraser. That's how important I think it is to, to have these tools when you're brush lettering. But anyway, I'll link it below and you can see all the stuff that's in it. You would get a try, a Tombow ABT, 
a fude mikase, a penta, you know, all the things you see here plus more. And I think there are even some really fun ones in like the Wink of Stella glitter brush pen if you're doing like fun art projects, which you will definitely want to do once you start practicing because it's so much fun. And let's see, what else do I want to say about that? I guess I just want to remind you that you don't have to buy anything special to start. You can definitely use something like Crayola markers. Just try stuff you have laying around your house if you're a little hesitant about, you know, how to start. Or if you're not even sure that you're gonna love it yet, you know, just like pick up a Crayola marker and see if you're having fun with it. Now, the way I practice is kind of per Hello Brio's recommendation, I start each practice, so I practice every day, and I start each practice session just practicing the basic strokes. Like you'll practice down strokes and ascending loops and descending loops. You know, you do that for maybe five to 10 minutes to warm up, and then you start practicing your letters. And then after you feel like you have a command of your letters, then you're going to start linking your letters together. Sometimes you can do nonsensical stuff. Sometimes you can practice linking together words. And you're gonna create, you know, a lot of what you're gonna create, frankly, is garbage. <laughs> I don't think you need to worry too much about it because you're really just trying to learn a muscle memory and you're trying to see what pens you like. So this is a notebook I practiced in. It's the Maruman Spiral Note it's a grid. I would recommend you want super smooth paper in a grid. So a lot of the notebooks I like to practice with, I started carrying in the store because that just made sense to me. So I would I would recommend this notebook. Another Maru Man, this is the Nemocene notebook. I think I've talked about this before. Here you can see all of the Tombow ABT pins that we currently carry swatched out. If people are interested in this pin, I can carry even more colors, but I basically, wanted to start with like all of my super, oh look, this color matches my nails, that's funny. Um, I basically started with all of the like super, the, my favorite colors, the super amazing colors, just to see if people were interested. And you can see this super smooth, super smooth Nemo scene. Okay, I have this page, I've showed this before in a video. I made this page that accidentally looks like an advertisement and it totally wasn't meant to. I was just looking for words to practice. So this is the notebook, the Nemocene Maruman 5 millimeter grid. Now I actually recommend this bigger size because, okay, what I'm gonna say is gonna freak out the like super strict lettering people, but I will sit on the couch and, and this is the perfect size to put on your lap and like practice while you're watching TV. Now people who are really serious about lettering, they know that posture is important. So, but, but here's the thing. If I have to sit at my dining table every evening to practice this, I just won't do it. So, so there you have it. Like I feel like it's more important for me to like have this in my life than to like stress myself out over it to the point that I'm not practicing. So that's sort of my recommendation to you is, you know, if if you want to if you want to do this for fun, then get something like this and you can sit it on your lap and practice while you're watching TV. Keeps your hands busy. You'll snack less. <laughs> but you can just see I like was practicing pages. Just anything that comes into my head, I'll write it down. It's actually kind of embarrassing. Like I probably shouldn't just freely Whatever, you get the idea. I was just trying different pens and stuff. And so I will just practice, practice, practice in like a grid notebook, a smooth paper grid notebook. Because remember, if you're picking like, oh my gosh, especially if you're picking up like recycled American paper notebook, it has so much nap that it's really hard on your pens and you're gonna be like, oh, these pens suck. They like get frayed fast. It's because the paper you're using is like violent to them. Other examples of grid notebooks, I just, I'll just, you know, just fill these with different, I don't know. It's kind of embarrassing to show my practice because of course it's not good. It's just kind of whatever. But I think you get the idea. 
just whatever practice 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 here I was practicing I was I was just decided I'm gonna write m the months because I want to practice stringing words together okay so I don't want to do overkill on that but I think you get the idea about how you're gonna want some supplies if you get if you find practice sheets you like then you know print out a ton of those and start practicing right on there that really helps because they usually already have the guidelines on for you I mean most of them will so yeah here's how I want to do this if you're interested in this like learning brush lettering with me I want to be able to see your work and what you're practicing so of course you could send me pictures you if you're on Instagram you could tag me but if you want like the whole, like to see everyone else who's doing this with us to be able to see it I think we should pick a hashtag I did look and see like okay what hashtags kind of aren't really currently being used so that we could have it as our own so I would like you to use beginner brush lettering and I'll have it here on the screen but do hashtag beginner brush lettering if you're on Instagram and you want us all to be able to see your work and you want me to see it, I'll be searching that every day. I'll be, when I'm practicing, I'll, I'll do that with a hashtag. I, I would love it if you wanted to share it on our Facebook page, then I'll be sure to see it. But I think just to stick with the sort of like community element, why don't we use hashtag beginner brush lettering so that we can all see each other's stuff. Um, because if you, ta if you just tag me, and I mean that's okay, but if you just tag me, then only I will see it and like the other people who are doing it won't see it. So I hope we have enough people that want to like try out this fun new hobby. And I bet you some of us will get really good, especially if we keep working hard at it. If you're interested in the starter kit, you can go check that out. I hope that you have a lot of fun with this. Have a great day. Bye-bye.